Uh, we're we're with our political correspondent uh, MJ, and we are talking about uh, WikiLeaks and the final 18 days leading up to this election. And a lot of stuff with the WikiLeaks has been um, it's been controversial to say the least on both sides of the aisle. Um, the the left side of the aisle is more well this is it's illegal this information should have never been obtained the way that it was and the right side is well let's take a look at what the information has to say and then we can make our judgment and um and if you could catch us up mj what is the situation with wikileaks from um, the people that don't understand it the wikileaks information that's coming out what kind of correspondence is this that's being leaked out to the public and why is this so controversial well wikileaks has been around for, for more than just this year. Um, a few years ago, they exposed some information about Bush that, you know, that had the, the left side of the aisle very, very excited. Um, so WikiLeaks is, is a, a website where you can upload information anonymous, anonymously. So it, it's a, like a whistleblower website. Um, and a gentleman that owns it is an Australian gentleman, and he's currently... Uh, well, a, a few days ago, he was known to be an Ecuadorian embassy in London. Uh, then within the last 48 hours, it was reported that his internet was went out. Uh, and then the next thing that was reported was that Ecuador was forced to turn his internet off um, by, the, by our government. And then so now, uh, what's happened is a bunch of people in London have gone to this Ecuadorian embassy with phones in their pockets, I think it's called Operation Hot Pocket, where they're basically trying to get their Wi-Fi for him to send a signal out. But what has come out of WikiLeaks now is that the tone of, of the person running the Twitter has totally changed. So the person who is behind this kind of main tone is this Julian Assange guy. And so he has such a connection, such a following, such a fan base, as far as this is the person that you could say the world has selected to be the breaker of, you know, uh, kind of backdoor information, whistleblower information. Um, and, and none of it is, is salacious in the sense that it's not like Gawker or it's not like any sort of celebrity gossip. It's all stories of corruption. It's stories of, of people spending money on things that they shouldn't, having meetings with people that they shouldn't. It's, it's all the backdoor connections of things that you see in the news and you maybe call someone a conspiracy theorist, theorist for it, and then you see actual emails and actual invoices and receipts lay it out. Um, and, and so that, that's where we're at right now. A lot of documents have come forth that basically show, um, uh, I hate to say it, some of our top leaders are, are kind of working against us. And so, uh, as I mentioned, you know, right when I got started, is having Hillary quote, one of her own documents from WikiLeaks in the middle of a debate uh, really gives it credibility when it has never had issues of credibility before ever anyway. Uh, so I, I think that where we're at right now with, with websites and social media profiles and social media comments and, you know, if people truly spend more time on social media now than they do on TV or magazines or anything else, and they know how it works, and they see who has more followers. You know, on Twitter it's followers, and on Facebook it's comments. So you can say as much as you want. If people see that all the nasty stuff on Hillary's page, people are not happy. Um, and they see all the pro-Trump stuff, and they see the video. People see YouTube videos, and they see the huge rallies on the videos for Trump, and they see the small ones on video for Hillary. You know, people see Trump putting out three pieces of content a day. They see Hillary putting out almost no video content. You know, it's, it, it, it makes a difference, and it is, it is such a time for the people um, to come together, and that's where it's happening right now above everything else. Well, let me ask you, while we're talking about video, um, one of the things that's come out that's that's really in the past week has changed the landscape of this, this election is the Project Veritas videos. Now, I know probably everybody has heard that name, but um, they may not understand what that is and what that content actually looks like. Can you give us some background information on the Project Veritas stuff? Because, And the reason I mention that is because when you're talking about videos, um, a press conference held by um, Secretary Clinton 
on her campaign plane when she was asked about the Project Veritas videos, and you mentioned this earlier, she labeled that as she she can't further discuss any uh, Trump conspiracy theories. Now, is is Project Veritas of these videos is this a conspiracy theory, or what what is this information and, and why is it important to this election? So Project Veritas that that is based around a young man named James O'Keefe who is a who basically organizes hidden camera kind of expose journalism. Um, I I know growing up that those those were always very popular on TV whenever they had a hidden camera and someone you're, said something they shouldn't. So yeah, you're talking about like candid camera and like kind of like punked kind of things like that. Exactly, and and people may remember. Um, a controversy with, uh, I believe, Planned Parenthood, to where it, the conversation looked as if they were selling the baby parts for profit. Uh, he he was the gentleman that put that project together. Um, they try and say that he is a uh, felon and try and discredit him, but he's actually not a convicted felon. He had a misdemeanor for trespassing in a government <laughs> in a government office, which is kind of what he does. Um, but basically what this is, is, is if you want to start, I, I mean, people see YouTube channels of, of teenagers doing makeup and, and you know, uh, guys doing all sorts of crazy stunts, but there's also some people that are making news. Right. And, and just like any, anything else, yeah, just like, uh, you know, a young athlete or, you know, some sort of superstar somewhere, some people are really, really good at, at, at this thing that they've done. And this guy is, a, is basically an independent journalist. Uh, Project Veritas is an independent news organization. And um, he was able to basically get, get his people hired in, uh, in, a, in a talking to, to Democratic consultants that you know, were advising violence at the Trump rallies. And, and the, the nature of the conversations that he was able to pick up on video are people saying... Uh, specifically, like the riots in Chicago, those were bought and paid for. And, and this guy is talking, you know, <clears throat> using a lot. You know, there's a difference between, you know, vulgar, vulgar conversation and kind of like just nasty talk and, and the way that this guy was kind of just talking very nasty about his opinions towards um, just the competition. And, and it came right down to, you know, people getting hurt. Um, and, and so since this guy has published these videos independently, uh, two major people have been fired. And one of those two people that was fired, uh, this guy Bob Creamer, has been to the White House like over 300 times or something in the last, uh, last few years, I think to say. Yeah, and, uh, but and he's, he's on, Josh and I were actually wild. talking about that earlier this morning, about the fact that uh, the, some of the folks that are involved in these videos had frequent White House visits so that... and. And some of those, uh, not a majority, but some of those visits were direct, uh, direct communication with our, our commander in chief. Well, you know, it's just disrupting, just disrupting the people like that. Like that's that's like the definition of domestic terrorism. Like you you can't like you. It is just so discouraging to to think and say, okay, well, how many other of these related events were manufactured and how much division and divide and conquer did that cause between us like my goodness like it's it's almost not even fair um but you know it really makes you hopeful as far as like if that's what we are working with you know what kind of change can we get in here to where you know maybe we can like start over right Um, and let me let me ask you a question because we got about five minutes left before the end of the show and with this uh this recent trend of information coming out via the internet, um, is this, are we, are we witnessing a bullet free bloodless revolution? I mean, is this kind of where it's, if the, cause we've talked at length this week about mainstream media's role in getting information out to the public. And then, and, and you mentioned before about media having a very important role in how the public Reacts. Is this a bit of a revolution, or is this a new a new style of war? I think that this is a this is a, a once in a lifetime kind of siege that we have in front of us, and I think to say it's a bloodless, bulletless 
Revolution is, is totally accurate. Um, you know, if you look at 1776, I, I, I'm correct, I think that started at the Battle of Moore's Bridge, which is like a very, very small choke point. Like, it's in the woods, there's a bridge over a little river, and a few people walked up to it, and a bunch of people were on the other side, and they decided they weren't going to let them pass. And if you look at these message boards and these choke points and, you know, these different areas, we have come together as a people. And the thing that we decided not to let pass is, is not Democrat or Republican, but just simply these people are really talking bad about us. They really, they really don't care about us. Um, and, and we're coming together in a way right now to where we can basically pull some sort of lever and go somewhere else from here. Um, you know, whatever, whatever is the next means that are available, I think what's been exposed is that our democracy, for us to be able to change hands of power and checks and balances, maybe it's not a four-year election cycle. Maybe it takes this first time like this. Maybe it took 60 years or 30 years or, you know, even you know, somewhere somewhere in there. And and so we can say, you know what, last time something like this happened, you know, we know, we know how to change it. And so whatever means are available... I think the thing that we've learned how to do as a young nation is we've learned that we can communicate and we can come together. And, you know, if, if we don't want to fight a war, we're not going to, you know. Right. And, and and I think that's what's important here. All right, we got uh, about a little over 60 seconds left. you got 18 days left between now and Election Day. Do you see anything on the horizon that's going to change the tide of this? Right now everyone's saying that it's neck and neck. What, do you, what are your thoughts? you got about 60 seconds. Uh, I think when Hillary said you can see what comes out on WikiLeaks in the next couple of days to make your own decision, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be because there's something juicy she knows coming or something uh, this is going to be fake or, or manufactured, but just use your discernment and, and put everything together and, and decide for yourself, and uh, I'll be happy to see everybody out there just to make, making a decision towards doing something together either way you decide. Awesome. Well, thank you, MJ, for joining us. Uh, we'll we'll touch base with you next week. I'm sure the uh, the weekend will provide even more information as we creep closer and closer towards Election Day. I want to thank all of our guests that joined us today. Uh, um, and actually, I, I want to make sure that I mention from uh, for Kate Parsons. Thank you very much for the uh, the necklace yep. choice for my wife. I actually did pick the right How one. How much time we got? I got confirmation. I, I did pick the right one, so I'm very excited. It's probably about 15 seconds. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, just to remind everybody what's coming up over the next week, but out of time. We got football tonight, 7 Barbecue o'clock kickoff. Saturday. Barbecue on Saturday. Burden Barn on Thursday. Halloween block party, October 31st, downtown Cleveland. I want to thank all of our guests. Thank you, MJ, and uh, thank you, viewers at thank home. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys next week, and we'll play it out with a clip, some music video. Good music video for the Friday morning. Now you tell me, right? Now I tell you. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you for watching. Your choice. We love you.